So we're going to use this 2005 Isuzu single cab pickup with four wheel drive, a three litre engine. It's an old truck, but it's a good truck. So this is going to be the the basis of our tipper truck or dump truck. So we're going to start by removing that tub off the back. It literally is eight bolts from underneath. Take that off and that gives us access to the chassis uh, to see what repairs the chassis needs, what kind of condition it's in. Uh, and obviously we don't need that tub anymore because we're going to build our very own back. Right guys, now we've got the back off, we've got it in the workshop. Um, so we can get out and repair that chassis a bit more. Um, I'll show you around it. Right, so now we've got it in the workshop. I've taken the wheels off so I can see it, the, get at the chassis a bit more. Um, as you'll see by the photo that I put in the video, the chassis was quite rusty when we took the back off, but it was pretty solid. It wasn't too bad. So what I did is, once we got the back off, I, uh, I literally took a small hammer and just tapped everything on the chassis. So any loose rust just fell off. Uh, once we've done that, I took a needle gun and I've needle gunned the old steel work which really, really brings it up, preps it ready for painting. Um, I mean, it doesn't have to be a car show run finish, but just preps it nice. And what it also does is if there's any holes, any rust spots, any real thin spots, it'll bust through them, uh, which is what you want because then we know where to repair. So as you'll see in the photo, I've repaired a patch. So there's the patch repaired, as you can see that. Let's see how that's done it. Now, this is the hole before we patched it. Now, I've got a bit of an advantage here, guys, because I'm a welder fabricator by trade. Um, so welding the patches up comes quite easy to me. Uh, oh, having said that, you know, being a welder fabricator, I'm used to welding nice, thick, new steel, not thin, rusty crap, as you can tell by some of my patches. More of a mechanic's job, really, welding this stuff. But as you can see, we have... Uh, I've not gone mental, I've just literally... Cleaned it up and made sure all the chassis is solid. It's pointless building a tipper uh, that's going to fail its next MOT on the chassis. Um, you'll notice uh, it's not too bad underneath. It's cleaned up all right, to be honest. It's solid. That's the main thing. It's, it's, and now I've done a bit of welding on it. I know it's solid. Um, I took the spare wheel off uh, because I don't... <laughs> just less weight. I don't really want to be running around with a spare wheel under there. If, you know, if there's a problem the spare wheel you know you're getting shitty and clarted so what i do is my golden rule is if i'm just running about the town which it's an it's going to be an ab tipper so i will be uh, i don't bother with a spare wheel worst comes to the worst i get a flat tire i will ring somebody and get them to bring me the spare wheel uh failing that if i am going out of town if i'm going like on a an hour's journey out of town or whatever i literally just throw the spare wheel in the back of the pickup um and hope i don't need it but so that's that's where we're at at the moment. So now today I'm going to mask this up and hopefully get some paint on the chassis. Here we are, masked up. If you wanted to do this properly, you would drop the fuel tank out, etc. But we're not going to go that far because this is just a tipper build and it's not a complete restoration. Uh, paint wise, this is what we're using. Good old Amorite Smooth Black. Nothing special. Uh, the reason I'm using this is I'm not going to go down the lines of two-pack and uh, primer and top coat, all that kind of malarkey. Amorite will do the job for what we want. Just one coat of this, maybe two coats, see how we go. Now my painting skills are definitely not the best, but as you can see already, quick flash of black Amorite has uh, improved. improved it all already. Uh, that I reckon. Right, now we're all uh, painted. I've actually made a start on the subframe of the of the tipper body. As you can see here, I've used 60 by 40 box by 2.5 mil thick. I didn't want to go too heavy because we don't want to make the overall body too heavy. You can see there I've bolted it down to the original chassis. So this is custom built to suit the chassis of, uh, of the Isuzu. Uh, that's the 
the bottom half of the tipper body as you like so at the back here what we're doing now is we're just making some tipper hinges so this is what we've got here you can see this side i've not knocked this one right through yet does that make sense i've drilled a hole right through the box and now i'm just knocking a piece of tube through which will get welded i'll put some pictures up of that uh, once it's welded just to give a bit of a strength to the bottom half of the hinge but that that gives us a good strong body for the bottom half of the, of the tipper body it's fastened at the back here to the original to, 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 to the chassis with a n12 bolt this one isn't fastened down don't need to be fastened down that it's just it's just resting on the uh, on the chassis you could fasten it down if you want but i don't think it needs it and then as we come through here we've, we've got this one fastened down and we've got this one fastened down so it's actually bolted down in six locations and this one's uh, also supporting the weight so slide that back over there and I'll pin just pops in and that is a nice simple easy tipper hinge so Keep watching. In our next video, I think we're gonna. I'm gonna show you how to. Oh, I'm gonna put the ram in to turn this into a tipping body. Right. So here we've got a not a scrap ram, but a ram and pump that I've bought. That's as you can see, second hand. It's been cut off from a, a transit tipper that we came from a scrapyard. And um, you can see they've just butchered. The lugs to get it off uh, so we'll make new lugs and... so we've uh, cleaned the ram up with a, a wire wheel on the grinder it's come up pretty good as you can see all right these are great little strong rams however they're only single stage which means they only have one extension so they don't have the required amount of travel to tip the body up far enough so they come with like a, a small fabrication like you can see here Mine didn't come with this, it had been chopped off at the scrap dealer, so I've had to make my own. Um, and I had no drawings for it, so what I did is I used cardboard to make a template up to get the correct dimensions. And uh, it worked, as you can see here, you'll see in the next part of the video how, how this actually works. Right. In theory... On the power of that ram, as that ram extends, I'm just going to push that right up. So now it's all mounted, I've wired the pump up and I've connected the hose from the pump to the ram. And you can see as we force the hydraulic fluid in there, I'm just hot wiring it at the moment. It opens the ram up, which opens that fabrication up and causes the body to tip. With all the hydraulics in place now, I can continue building the bed and start to make some progress. So we're using a 60 by 40 box frame around the outside again, a couple of strong bearer bars across the middle, and then we're filling all the gaps in with a 25 by 25 box section. And this will be skinned on top with that galvanized right. steel so to make our bed. I've had it on the back of the truck and I'm happy with the positioning of the bed and all the steel work and the position of the ram and everything. What I've done is I've actually taken it off the truck Split it back down to weld it all up. It, it makes it easier, as you can see. Here. I'll flip this camera around. There you go. Now you can see. So I've took it off the back of the truck just to weld it all up. There's a, a lot of uh, cross members in here. I'm trying to keep the weight down as daft as that sounds. So I've used extra uh, 25 by 25 ERW, nice and light. Uh, but the, the steel work that I'm putting on the back of it is only 1.5 mil thick, so it's quite thin. So I need these extra braces to stiffen it up you can see all the positioning for the ram mounts there i've beefed them up here with these 45s it needs that because the ram is pushing back against that cross member so it needs these 45s in to give it strength but now i've taken it off i've welded it all up there's the bottom half and um what i'm doing now is i'm just applying a coat of primer here we've got the uh 
the ram and the little fabrication that I made that houses the ram. So all I'm literally doing here is rollering what we call tractor and machinery paint and I am literally just rollering it on. Uh, just, I mean, if you've got a spray shop, be even better. But I'm not setting up the spray gun and everything. I'm just going to roll this to keep it easy. So, after a, a bit of rolling, here we have. There's all our framework. Painted with a white undercoat. There's a bit of fabrication that we did. You can see the ram there. Now for a bit of colour. Top coat colour, we're going to use grey. I think the grey and the orange ram will look pretty good together. Once all that paint's dry, this is the good bit. We can start and build it back up. It's starting to look something. So, now we've got it all back up. I've wired a, a control box up. This is just a cheap box off eBay, about 15 quid. But wired in properly. And now you can see it tipping. Tipping in colour. I'm quite impressed with how, how this is working out so far. Back in the workshop guys, so just show you, here we're making the toolbox and the bulkhead, can you see that? So, this is all made from ARW, so it's quite it's quite thin, light material, it's only 1.5mm thick, 25mm by 25mm box, and 40mm by 40mm box, these uprights which are going to be the corner posts. So these are not ARW. These are just the 60 by 40 by 2.5. You can see how thick they are. They're a little bit thicker for a bit more strength. That's the same as what I made the actual body out of the bed. Uh, but you can see it's starting to take shape. So this is going to be our bulkhead and our toolbox. And this is all going to be lined with this stuff, which is a galvanized sheet. I'm only using 1.5 mil. Um, if I was going to build it again, I'd maybe go a bit thicker, I'd maybe use 2mm, but that's what I bought, so that's what we're using. That's the galvanised sheet welded on the back to create our bed, and we're just going to build the bulkhead framework and the toolbox framework here. Then we're just going to weld that on at the front, and you can see I've welded the rear posts on at the back, and now I'm going to skin that toolbox and that bulkhead with a galvanised sheet again. And I've added four little tie down rings here into the bed. Picking the aluminium up gives us a, a good chance to use the roof rack feature. I see people build these ab trucks and don't put this little extra tube in across the top and the back, uh, which makes a, a roof rack. Brilliant, carrying its all aluminium and got a chance to use the tie downs. So this is what we're starting with, our steelwork frame, we've got all the uh, posts in, and what we're going to do is we're going to start and build with the aluminium, see the aluminium stacked up there, so we're going to start with a, we're going to use this channel, aluminium channel. That's what we're going to start with first. And then we're going to fill it with these aluminium planking. As you'll see, we've got, we're going to cut this on this cross cut saw. This is one of them uh, multi blades that cuts steel, aluminium, and wood. I don't know how good it'll do cutting steel, man. Let's start. So that's one side, 
fully railed with the channel, with the aluminium channel, as you can see. Excuse the sunlight. And the truck's going past. And you, as you can see in here, what I've done is it's all just pop riveted. Can you see that? All the way along and up the sides. So now let's cut some plank. So you can see there, that's the 200 mil, and this is the 100 mil. <laughs> we'll get a straight out of there. We'll cut some of this. Right. So yeah. We've cut some of the 100 mil stuff and I've just put two pieces together to show you how it clicks in. So that just clicks together like that. You see that? And if you push it fair enough, these little click, these little lips click over and lock it in place. It's not quite as easy as it looks. It's quite hard to get it in. You've really got to stand it on its edge, put a piece of wood on there and hit it with a mallet to get it in. Um, the first one I did was really heavy going so the second one I the second one I had to go at I squirted WD-40 easy oil in on here to get it in um, you're gonna need some kind of lube everything goes in easier with a bit of lube Right, so that's the sides complete. Got the top panel in. I'll come round the uh, round the other side. The lights a bit better. Stand back a bit. You can start to get the shape of it now. So our aluminium planking, we've got eleven hundred mil high because we've got five pieces at two hundred mil. And then we've got that one piece in the middle, the 100 mil, which gives us 1100. And I don't think that looks too bad, considering looking at the pickup, I don't think it's too high, and I don't think it's too low. I'm pretty pleased with that. So here we are now in my uh, in my kitchen. It looks more like a cookery show now, but it, it definitely isn't a cookery show. Um, so what we've done now is I'm making the the little toolbox doors. So I've made these pretty much the exact same idea as I made the big doors, just on a smaller on a smaller scale. So what I'm doing is I'm now fitting these little flappy catches. Um, it's quite awkward to work out how to fit these as like what I'm going to have to cut out of the door. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do it now and then uh, you can pause the video, I'll run the video around it and you can pause it and you can see the shape that I've cut out to make these uh, these little catches work, you know. That's it getting marked out. So, there's our flap installed, our catch, it fits, it 
place in there. Nice and flush. You can see from the back. We had to cut right through for this to fit in. And you can see that's it's proud. And then that will catch when the door shuts. So that's the pattern that we started with. That's obviously the outside. And then that'll go right through to the inside as I've drilled them four holes. They go right through. So I can pick them up on the back. And then that's the little bit we're going to put out for the latch. So you see how I marked it originally? I actually went a bit deeper with that. I'll show you what I mean. So this is actually going to be. More like that. Well, there's the door installed. Perfect little toolbox now. Perfect for the saws. Or whatever else you want to put in there. There it is all finished, finally. It's a bit dirty because uh, I've been using it, I've been earning some money. Gotta say, I'm really pleased with it. I've not put any mud guards on the back. Um, I might lift the suspension on it at a later date. So I'll probably put the mud guards on afterwards when it's sitting right. But all in all, it's a really useful truck. Well, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, if you've got any comments or questions, just drop them in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them. And don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll, uh, I'll maybe do a few more videos.